As fall becomes winter at Hanford Mills Museum, a layer of ice starts to form on the mill pond. This ice will be harvested by the museum, just like generations of people did here in East Meredith on the northwest foothills of the Catskill Mountains and in other cold climates. It has not always been easy to get and make ice like it is today. Before electricity was widely available, people could not use freezers to make ice. Instead, they relied on nature. During the winter months, people would harvest ice from frozen bodies of water, just like they harvested crops like corn or wheat. This ice would be stored in ice houses so that it could be used during the rest of the year to help keep food and drinks cool. Before you can harvest ice, first you need to see how thick it is. An auger is used to drill a small hole in the ice. A measuring stick is lowered down to check the depth. Snow acts as an insulator, which slows ice growth. Once the ice is thick enough to walk on, it is regularly cleared of snow to help it grow more quickly. The ice will be cleared just before the harvest to make the process easier. After the ice is cleared, the surface is marked in a grid to show where each block will be uniformly cut. A plow is used to score the surface of the ice. Once the first block is removed from the ice, the ice harvest can begin. Saws are used to cut the ice following the lines scored on the surface. After the three sides of the block have been cut, breaker bars are used to break away the last side. Ice hooks, or pike poles, can be used to guide the ice through the water and to the shore, where it will be pulled up a ramp out of the pond. Ralph Hanford spent much of his childhood around the mill. His father and uncle owned and operated it. In this recording, he shares some of his memories about harvesting ice. They used to, uh, maybe you know, they used to run over with a marker and square it off and cut down a little, and then you had a big handsaw, and uh, then you had a chute coming up out of the end, and you had to handle it with pikes, and the chute, well, there were two kinds. The one they used there, they had a thing with a big handle and a couple hooks on the bottom. So somebody kept to run up and down the side of the sh chute to get it up. Horse would pull it up and he just steered it. The blocks of ice are loaded onto sleds and brought to the ice house. Ice tongs are used to pick up the blocks. Ice is stacked inside the ice house with layers of sawdust between them. The sawdust acts as an insulator and prevents the ice from melting quickly. The combination of insulation, along with ventilation at the top of the building and drainage at the bottom, allow the ice houses to protect the ice without mechanical refrigeration. Some look like this one at Hanford Mills. Others were big warehouses. Ice like this was used by families who would keep a block in their ice box to keep their perishable foods fresh. Dairy farms used ice to keep their milk cold as they transported it to places where it was sold. Here at Hanford Mills, the ice harvested is used to make ice cream on the 4th of July.